So your, your 2017, the success of your 2017 is dependent on your perspective. And we believe that if you can gauge the perspective of the realities of heaven, this idea where you keep your eyes focused on God, that no matter what's going on around you, like you could still have a great year. Come on, somebody. If your eyes are fixed on the creator, nothing else matters. And so we're, we're on this five-week journey entitled The Realities of Heaven. And each week we're looking at a reality of heaven, something that you can take with, with you. And, and, and apply it to 2017. And so the first week, the reality of heaven was this. This is your moment. This is your moment right now. God placed you on earth right now for a specific purpose and a specific reason. That it is not by accident that you are here. This is your moment. Last week, we, we looked at the idea that heaven's reality was this. That you were created to withstand the flames. You were created to embrace the flames. This week, God, I really feel like God just put something on my heart. This week, the subject, and you can go ahead and title this. I'm jumping ahead of my notes, but that's okay. Uh, the title and the reality of heaven for this week is this. Wholeness is your inheritance. Wholeness is your inheritance. And so this idea of realities of heaven, it's based out of what Paul writes in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1. And it says this, since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of your wallet. <laughs> set your realities on Capitol Hill. Set your sights on your significant other. Paul says, set your sights on the realities of heaven. Where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Got one more verse for you and then we'll dive in into the message. And it's out of Colossians chapter 2 and verse 6 through 10. <clears throat> and that may be the wrong verse. Freedom from rules. Oh, no, there it is. Okay. And now just as you accepted Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Someone say it's a process. Come on, for those of you that have been doing Christianity for a long time, you understand that it's a process. I know the church in whole, we've done a great job of letting you know it's a right now thing, but I want you to understand it's a process. Don't beat yourself up. It's a process. Uh, verse 7, let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will go, grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that comes from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. And he, here's, here's our key text verse for, for this week. Verse 9. For in Christ lives all the fullness. All the fullness. In Christ is all the wholeness, all the completeness that you will ever need. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in human body. But watch this. Here, here's how this applies to you and I. So you also are complete. Is that good news, anyone? So you also are whole through your union with Christ. And that's a pretty important part right there, too. Uh, who is the head over every ruler and authority? Again, uh, if you haven't, did everyone get their notes that wants notes? If you didn't get a note, I think we can get the ushers out there. If you didn't get any notes, you want to raise your hand. Everyone got them going once. We have one person up front. If we can get some notes, two people up front. We're going to scare people from sitting up front. They're going to be like, I'm not sitting up front. I don't get notes. So, and then one right here. 
So again, uh, for those that are, of you that are filling out the notes, the message today is wholeness is your inheritance. Let's pray. Father, we love you. And God, we thank you so much for what you're wanting to do today. God, I pray right now that you would just, uh, God, let the ground of our hearts receive what you want to say through your word. God, we love you. We honor you today. We bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, so I'm going to say something super controversial. You may judge me after I say this. I love Taco Bell. I know some of you are like, it's poison. I'm like, it's good poison. Yeah. Like, don't, it's, I like Taco Bell. As a matter of fact, I would almost choose a Taco Bell taco over an authentic taco. <laughs> There's something about rat meat that, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love Taco Bell. And I'm, I'm a pretty, uh, like I know my order when I go there. I, I typically get a Diet Coke because you all know I refuse to drink my calories. Hey. <laughs> uh, uh, I'll get a, a Mexican pizza. I'll get a chalupa, and then I'll get a crunchy taco. Chill, y'all. They're small, okay? Like, they're small. Some of y'all are looking at me like, oh, my God. <laughs> it's okay. Chill. <laughs> so I, I get the same thing all the time. Now, I'm, I'm in drive-thru. This is about two weeks ago. I'm in, I'm in drive-thru. I, I order my stuff. The, the person on, on the intercom's like, please pull forward. I pull forward. Um, and then I, I get my stuff, like she gives me my, my bag, and I'm like, awesome. Now, let's pause. Did anyone grow up with a parent who, like, when you were in the drive-thru, they, uh, when they received the order, they just, they refused to move forward. They would just stand. They would just stay there and check through all the, the bag before, like, they moved. Does anybody? Like, I, I remember growing up, and my mom, like, she would do that. We're in the drive-thru. She gets her order, and she's like, just, she's, she doesn't move up. She wasn't that Christian back then. And she. <laughs> she's not here. I don't, I don't see her. <laughs> and, and so, so she, she's, uh, she'll, she'll stay, and she'll just look. And I remember, like, just, like, people behind us are, like, so angry, you know. Like, Mom, why is someone waving number one to us? Mom, what's going on? <laughs> and, and, and so I remember, like, I, because of that, because I was scarred, I'm like, I will never, ever do that. So I get my food in. There's people behind me, so I'm not going to be that person in line. So I drive all the way. I drive all the way home. I pull up, and I'm excited because I'm hungry. And, and I go through my bag. And I, and I have my Mexican pizza, I have my taco, but they forgot my chalupa. Now at that point, let me tell you, I'm livid. I feel like there's nothing worse in life than driving off away from the drive through with not your complete order. Because listen, here's the deal. You trust that everything is in there. You trust that it's a complete order. So when it's not a complete order... It bugs you. There's something that messes with you inside. Now, I'm not going to waste gas, so I'm, I, I'm not going to drive back there and, and tell them this. So, like, the whole day, my whole day is messed up. <laughs> Remember, I said, don't judge me. <laughs> All because what was supposed to be complete, I found it to be incomplete. Now, if we were honest this morning, we would, if we were honest, we would say to ourselves, I understand the confusion and the frustration that is related to feeling incomplete. Like some of you here this morning, uh, or maybe even some in the past, like you understand this feeling of being incomplete. And we've tried to fill it too, for the most part, right? Some of you guys, you tried to fill that emptiness, you tried to fill that void with people. Different guys, different girls, and you're realizing, well, that's not it. 
Some of you, you, you tried to fill this emptiness and this, this void with, uh, with fame and, and different social status of income and houses and cars. And, and you get all this stuff and you realize, nope, this is not it. Some of you, 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 you've, re- you've, you've relied on substances to try and fill your void in this emptiness. And, and you realize, hey, that's not it either. See, because I think for, for a while, these things, they're great bandages, right, if we're honest. Like, they help for a sec. They're temporary fixes. But eventually, that, that emptiness, that feeling of incomplete, it, it comes back. And I really think the reason for that is, is because we're trying to fix an internal issue with an external solution. See, I believe that any void, any emptiness that you and I may have, that it's something that, that stems with us inside, internally. That if you want to fix this void that you have, it's something inside of you that needs to be filled. We look all the way at the very beginning. We see the reason is... It's because you, you rewind all the way back to the beginning of Genesis. When God created first man, first woman, Adam and Eve. And I love how God, he looked at all that he created and he said this. He said, it is good. Now I'm no theologian, I'm no scholar, but I do believe that when God says this is good, that it means that it's not missing anything. That when God said this is good, he looks at it and he said this is complete, this is whole, this is everything that I've ever desired for it to be. He said this is good. We know what happens, the the little serpent comes and offers Adam and Eve the fruit and at that very moment all of a sudden pride comes And they end up eating the fruit, disobeying God, and this is the first encounter of sin. Now, if we understand what sin does, sin is a wedge that's shoved between you and God. And so we read in the scripture in Genesis that God, literally because of this sin, it separated man from God. Thus causing the first ever void. In the life of man. And for thousands and thousands of years, men have tried to fill this void. They, they sacrificed animals to try to fill this void and nothing was working. How many of you guys can relate to that? Nothing works sometimes. And, and they're getting there and, and in thousands, and they're, they're trying to fill this void. They're trying to be made whole and nothing is working. And I believe that God looked down on earth and he was like, man, this is kind of pathetic. I kind of want to be with my people. And so what does he do? Paul talks about it in the verse that we read. He sent down his son Jesus. And now I understand Jesus, he said some really cool things, right? He did some amazing miracles. But I believe Jesus' number one purpose for coming to earth was to fill the void in your and my life. So that we are not walking around feeling incomplete, feeling less than, but to be full, to be whole. Come on, touch your neighbor, tell them wholeness is your inheritance. Wholeness, come on, turn to your second choice. Wholeness. When I, uh, when I was putting this message together, so, so I start on Wednesdays, um, and I've been doing this for three years, so I kind of get the flow of, you know, how to put something together. But um, what, what's crazy is that I've understood that when I'm having a hard time putting things together, it's either uh, the enemy's like, I don't want you to speak it because there's going to be a lot of power in there. Or it's God saying, hey, rethink what you're going to talk about. 
And I really felt like God was saying, hey, rethink what you were talking about. And, uh, and, and so because when I was structuring this message, it was really geared toward this idea that, hey, uh, you need to, you need to, uh, you need to, this message is for people who are unbelievers. And because I wanted to stand up here and say, if you are not a follower of Christ, then uh, you are not whole, but he wants to make you whole today. Because it sounds so epic. It sounds so right. But I feel like in the midst of putting this message together, I felt like God was convicting me. And I felt like he was saying this to me, don't be so arrogant. I was like, what are you talking about, God? And I felt like he was saying, don't be arrogant in assuming that just because people have made a decision to follow me, that they're walking in the wholeness that I have for them. I said, okay. <laughs> and so this morning, it's for both camps. If you're here this morning and you've never made a decision to follow Christ, this message is for you, that God wants to make you whole. But it's also for the camp over here who've, who have made a decision to follow Christ, but they're still struggling with this idea of walking in the wholeness that God has for them because wholeness is your inheritance. There's something for you here. Wholeness is your inheritance. See, there, there, there may be some of you in here this morning who, man, you, you've been doing this thing for a while. You've been loving God for a while, but you're still struggling with that addiction. You still have no joy. You walk around hopeless. That's not your inheritance. Your wholeness is your inheritance. Wholeness is your inheritance. And, and so this morning, uh, in our last moments together, I want that to be the theme of what we're talking about, to understand that idea that wholeness is your inheritance, that no matter where you're at, whether you're over here or, or over here, that wholeness is your inheritance. And we're going to look at uh, this through the lens of a man in uh, the Old Testament named Naaman. Naaman, he was a... Uh, he was a, uh, an official. As a matter of fact, he was like a high up guy. As I was doing some research uh, on, on Naaman, uh, a lot of people believe that he was very wealthy. He would have been like famous. And here is this man. He, he is a high up ranking official. He has the money. He has the, the cars. He didn't have the cars. He didn't have the <laughs> chariots. He had the most coolest chariot ever. And, uh, and, and he has all this stuff, right? However, the only problem is Naaman, he has this thing called leprosy. Now, the problem with leprosy is that uh, it begins to eat away at sh your, your body, <laughs> Leaving you unwhole. That's very common for your fingers, your toes, your nose to be gone. Because of this disease. And here is this man, Naaman. He has all this stuff and yet he's not whole. He's not complete. But he goes on this interesting journey. From being incomplete to being made whole. And so... Uh, Within our next moments together, I want to give you three uh, decisions that Naaman had to make to walking out his wholeness. Three observations that he, that he did. And so we're going to start at 2 Kings chapter 5 and verse 1. It says this, the king of Aram had great admiration for Naaman, the commander of his army, because through him the Lord had given Aram great victories. But though Naaman was a mighty warrior, he suffered from leprosy. At this time, 
Aramean raiders had invaded the land of Israel, and among their captives was a young girl who had been given to Naaman's wife as a maid. One day the girl said to her mistress, I wish my master would go see the prophets in Samaria. He would heal him of his leprosy. So Naaman told the king what the young girl from Israel had said. For those of you that are filling out the blanks, here's number one. Don't accept the unacceptable. Don't accept the unacceptable. Don't accept the unacceptable. When I read this section of scripture, I can't help but feel like Naaman is at the edge of accepting his fate. When I read this, this passage, I, I feel like um, I feel like he, he's he's uh, he's there and he's um, he, he's kind of I, I feel like he's had this idea like I've tried the best doctors I've tried the best medicine nothing works so I'm uh, so I'm just gonna accept what it is. Have you ever been there? Maybe whatever it is you're struggling with today. Like you've had it for so long. And you've just, you, you, you've tried the best therapy. You've tried the best doctors. You got rid of the people in your life that, that you feel like is bringing you down. And yet you still, you, you feel like it's not going away. You're almost at that point of just accepting, accepting it, whatever it is. That this is just how it's going to be. I've, 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 I've had it here my whole, this is just how it's going to be. I've been struggling with this for so long, this is just how it's going to be. See, I feel like Naaman, he was at that at that place where, where he's like, man, maybe this is just what I'm going to have. Maybe leprosy is just the thing that I'm going to have. And then all of a sudden, this girl, this slave girl, she's like, wait, wait, don't, don't, don't accept that. What about this? See, this morning, I want to encourage you. I want to be your slave girl. And I want to say to you this morning, hey, hey, don't, don't accept it. Whatever it is you've been praying God to, to remove from your life, the very thing that's preventing you from being made whole, don't accept it. Don't accept the thing that is robbing you of your wholeness. It's not yours. Don't accept it. Don't accept the unacceptable. So Naaman, he, he listens to, to, that, to the girl, and, and so he goes to his king, and he's like, hey, king, there, there's, a, uh, there's a guy that, um, that I think that can heal me. Is it okay if I go? And the king's like, Ooh, I'm sorry. The king was like, yes, for sure, you can go. And so the king, he gives name and like, like all these riches and things to bring to the prophet Elisha. So Naaman, he travels all the way over to meet this prophet, to meet this guy that has the ability to maybe perhaps allow God to, to move through him, to heal him. And so we're going to pick up at verse 9. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and waited at the door of Elisha's house. But Elisha sent a messenger to, with him with this message. Go and wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River. 
Then your skin will be restored and your leprosy will be healed. But Naaman became angry. They forgot my chalupa. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But Naaman became angry and socked away. I thought he would certainly come out to meet me, he said. I expected him to wave his hand over the leprosy and call on the name of the Lord and his God and, and heal me. Aren't, aren't the other rivers of Damascus, the Abana, and the P word better than any of the rivers of Israel? Why shouldn't I wash them and be healed? So Naaman turned and went away in rage. Here's number two. Get over your reality. Get over your reality. Get over your reality. See, you, you kind of got to put yourself in his shoes. Here's this high-ranking official, this, this high-ranking guy who, who, who comes with, from stat, like he has status with him, you know? And he gets there, and this guy, Elisha, he doesn't even come out of his house. Naaman's like, hey, I'm here. Elisha sends his servant to go out to meet him. I think you guys could understand, like, why. He's, he's a little, I traveled all this way. My grandma lives in, in San Francisco. There's been a time when I wanted to surprise her, drive all the way over there, and she's not home. Like, why aren't you? He goes all the way, and Elijah, he doesn't even come out of the house. He sends his servant. Now, if that wasn't enough, what the servant is about to tell uh, Naaman is even worse. His servant comes out and is like, uh, Naaman, uh, Elijah said to go jump in the Jordan River seven times and you'll be healed. Well, uh, uh, Naaman was like, uh, well, that's a nasty, polluted, filthy, dirty, muddy river. Why would I jump in that? And these are the things that, that he's battling with, like, really? See, because Naaman's r response could have been much like at least mine. Like, are you serious? You're not coming out to see me. Now you're sending me to a river that is filthy and you want me to jump in this. You're crazy. Get over your reality. Get over your reality. See, I, what I believe that was happening was that Naaman's mind wasn't able to grasp what his heart so desperately wanted to accept. See, I, I believe that deep down inside Naaman's heart, he wanted to believe that all he had to do was jump into muddy water and he'd be healed. I believe that 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 he he wanted to he wanted to believe in the bottom of his heart that that's all he had to do. But his cerebral cerebral educated reality prevented him from receiving what God was wanting to, here's where, I'm, here's where I'm going at. How many times have we prevented God from moving in our lives because it doesn't make sense in here? God, there's no way that you can save my marriage. We've been arguing forever. It doesn't make sense. Up here it doesn't make sense, but you want to believe it in here. Get over your reality. God, there's no way I can get over this addiction. It's too strong. I've been dealing with it for too long. It doesn't make sense. How could me surrendering my life to you get over your reality? 
don't prevent what God wants to do in here. Stop it because you can't get it past here. Get over your reality. For me, I'm talking to myself. John, get over your reality. Y'all are looking at me like, ugh, he's all yelling and judging me. I'm talking to myself. John, get over it. God, how are you really going to use this church to reach Roner Park? God, we're so small, right? Get over my reality, John. Get over your reality. So much more for you. Stop limiting God with this. Start trusting him with this. And my final one. We're in 2 Kings verse 13. But his officers tried to reason with him and said, Sir, if the prophet had told you to do something very difficult, wouldn't you have done it? So you should certainly obey him when he simply, excuse me, when he says simply, go and wash and be cured. So Naaman went down to the Jordan River and dipped himself seven times as the man of God had instructed him. And his skin became as healthy as the skin of a young child. Come on, who wants some of that water, huh? Woo! Just last, last. Anyways, I'm getting old, everyone. I'm like 33 years. I got like crow's feet, like just, y'all are stressing me out. Let's keep reading. And his skin became as healthy. And he was healed. Here's number three. Choose your circle carefully. Choose your circle carefully. I, I really, I really want to dive into this point right here because I want you to understand the magnitude of what's taking place. Naaman, he's on his way home. He's on his way from not walking into the wholeness that God has for him. And the one thing that, that kept him from going home was the circle of people that he had around him. Think about that. We can't play down the idea that who you hang out with is a big deal. Well, this sounds like a children's church message, Pastor John. It's true. See, your circle of friends will either push you to or pull you from the wholeness that God has for you. Think about, like, look, think about the friends. By all account, the friends could have said, yeah, Naaman, that's right, let's go home. Who does this guy think he is? What a punk. Let's just go. He doesn't, you don't need him, Naaman. Oh. They could have done that. And we would have been reading a completely different story. But instead, they said, Naaman, what if? What if that's right? Like, I know it doesn't make sense, Naaman, to jump in this now. But what if he was right? You got to have people pushing you too. What God has for you, not pulling you from. You could be one step away from your wholeness if you can remove the wrong people from your life. I'm serious. Your wholeness is your inheritance. This morning, we can bow our head, close our, our eyes, I'm done. And Surprise, surprise, I went over my time. Wholeness is your inheritance. I want to speak this over your life this morning. Don't accept the unacceptable. Come on, there's someone in here, they've been, they've been on the verge of saying, hey, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to accept it. These thoughts... This physical ailment, 
this situation. I'm just going to accept it. I'm here to tell you this morning, don't accept it. Don't accept the unacceptable. Don't accept it. Don't accept it. I want to speak over your life this morning. Don't listen to your mind. Don't prevent what God wants to do in your heart by allowing your mind to dictate what you do. And I want to speak over your life. Choose your, choose your circle carefully. Put the right people around you. Surround yourself with like-minded people. 2017. Don't accept the unacceptable. 2017. Get over your reality. 2017. Set the right people around you. Father, we thank you this morning.